What got me interested in behavior design is that it's a new field that uses behavioral science, which has reached a point of usefulness in informing things like how we address our health, how we address our wellness, those kinds of things. As a physician, I really didn't have those tools to deal with my patients in a better way. And I was really craving something that was gonna be more useful, more helpful to people. And I just so happened to have this kind of hobby of neuroscience where I would read a bunch of neuroscience on the side, on planes and various things. And it just started to come together as, hey, this really is what's going on below the surface. Everything I'm seeing here when people don't do what they know they should is because there's something going on in the brain that is preventing them from doing that. And so just by asking that question and hunting down the answer, I ended up in the lab of BJ Fogg at Stanford, who is a mentor of mine. And he's the one who actually coined the phrase behavior design. And again, it's just this whole new way of looking at how to design for health, how to design what we actually want to do and not get distracted. So the ways that we can use technology to engage us in our health rather than distract us all have to do with what is consolidating versus dispersing or diffusing our attention. Our attention span happens to be one of the three primary sort of neural circuits that re-register as happiness. And so when we feel focused, when we feel in, people describe it as being in the zone or being in a state of flow, that's, that's a consolidation or a uh, focusing of attention. So technologies that help that are gonna be very healthful. They're gonna help us to feel better about ourselves. If you think about it, the technologies that are hurting people are creating this crazy frenetic energy or I've got to check on something or you know fear of missing out or those kinds of psychological injuries if you will and so for us we, ha we haven't quite figured out how to do this right but those are the basic guidelines of what's beneficial versus harmful. To me health engagement is about helping people to overcome their shame and to believe that they can do something. So a lot of times people don't engage or they disengage because they feel, oh, I've been there, done that, I tried and it didn't work out, or they won't even try because they're concerned about failing. And so for me, it's about coming forward with a message around how can I get over my shame? To me, that's a three-point recipe. The first part is you're not bad. Being able to deliver that message and help somebody understand they're not bad for this happening to them. It's not their fault. The second part of the recipe is you're not alone. There's other people like you, and that's where we see a lot of the social networking or various people doing things in pairs or groups that helps them feel not isolated and not like I'm the only one on the planet. And then the third part is there's a way out. You're not stuck where you are. Everybody at any point in their health or in their life can move forward on some level. Mm -hmm.